Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering section 723 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. Uh, this is continuing our examination of Faraday's law. We learned about magnetic flux and how that generates an EMF. Um, most recently we learned about self-inductance, L. Um, we learned how two different loops would cause, you know, a, uh, uh, a would the there's a constant times the current that would give you the flux through the other loop and so this constant would tell you how one changing current would influence, would create an EMF in the other. Okay, so uh, when we have a circuit with inductance, which every circuit does, um, we can calculate um, how much work is done to uh, to basically bring the current up to I. And so we have uh, this differential equation. Well, work is this is going to be equal to negative epsilon the EMF times the current, and the EMF is just uh, L di over dt. So it's L i, this is from that guy, di over dt. Okay. So, um, why is it these, this uh, epsilon i? So, remember that we have uh, Ohm's law that says there's some force pushing um, the current through a conductor. And so it's just the force times the velocity, basically, of the charge. So that's, that's all that really is. Makes a lot of sense. If you integrate over the total time to get, build up to get to a current I, then the integral will actually give you that the total work done is uh, 1 half L I squared. Okay. Um, that shouldn't surprise you. There's a very similar equation in mechanics um, where if you're thinking of L as the mass and I as the velocity, there's a really huge parallel right here. You know, one half mv squared for kinetic energy. This is one half li squared. So the, the higher the inductance, the more work it requires to build up a current. The higher the current, it takes more work according to the square of that current to build up that current. So this is one of those equations you put in a box and you, you hold on to it for a very long time. Um, if you're gonna do some kind of electronics course, if you're an electrical engineer, then this is one of those equations you're never gonna forget. You have to live by this one. Okay, there is a better way to calculate W. Oh, uh, one more comment. So your resistance, you have a resistor in the loop and this resistor just bleeds energy. It doesn't doesn't restore it. But when you have this current running through a, a, a loop with um, uh, with an inductance, okay, this is recoverable energy. Okay, so it really is like kinetic energy. Once that ball starts moving, you know, when that ball slows down, that energy has to go somewhere. The same way here. Once that, if you're going to try to stop that current, you know, there's going to be an, enough force uh, opposing you as you stop it, and it'll do as much work as there is in this formula here. Okay, so um, the flux phi through the loop is equal to L i. Okay, so the flux phi. This is a nicer way to work with this. Is equal to the integral v vector dot d a vector over some surface, okay? And B is just the curl of A, our magnetic vector potential friend. Um, by the way, these, these, uh, this potential might seem a little weird to you, but later on, we're gonna have some really fun potentials. We're just gonna have a, a seriously fun time with these guys. And so applying Stokes theorem, so we have some closed loop over the circuit of A vector dot D L vector. Okay, that was fun. Um, so this was equal to Li, so we get Li is equal to closed loop over the circuit of A vector dot DL vector, okay? And so the work, one half Li squared, so work, let's add in a factor of one half and I and multiply it by the same. Okay, and if if we um, take this I and move it on the inside, and say this is the I that's traveling around this 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 the circuit, so now we can write this as one half a vector dot the I vector, okay, times the length of each segment as we go around the loop, okay, and this should be uh, incredibly familiar. This looks like the analog of, uh, you know, this is like the 
the one-dimensional version with the one-dimensional current. What if we had three dimensions? Well, indeed, you can bring it up the parallel to um, some volume. You take a vector dot the volume current density. Um, okay, there you go. So now we have a more general equation that describes you know currents throwing, flowing through a volume the A vector those generates and we just dot them together and that'll give us the work it took to build up that that A vector field. Um, let's try to express it now completely in terms of the magnetic field. So um, we know that uh, the curl of B, let's see how does he go, yeah curl of B is mu naught J. So one half the inner volume integral, uh, let's bring up the mu naught matter over here. So we get uh, a vector dot the curl of b, which is mu naught j, so we have to bring that mu factor uh, d tau. Okay? And we can use the, word, the, the rule uh, using product rule number six. There's actually, um, this is a triple product, isn't it? Let me see, product rule number six. Oh, this is the grad. Yeah, we have, to, we have to bum the grad around. So product rule number six, unfortunately, uses A and B. Actually, A dot... Heh! <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if you look at product rule number six, let me write that down. So product rule number six says that when you have the divergence of two vector fields crossed with each other, that's going to get you the, the second vector field dotted with the curl of the first minus the first vector field dotted with the curl of the second. And indeed, this matches up exactly with that. Um, move this to the other side, subtract that, and so we get the work is equal to 1 over mu naught, 2 mu naught, I guess I should do it. Uh, I have it backwards there. So then we get the integral of um, this guy. Okay, minus the curl, uh, the, I'm sorry, the divergence of the two vector fields crossed with, with each other, d tau. Okay, um, this one should be rather apparent. What's the cross of A? That's B. So that's just B squared, 2 mu naught, integral of B squared, uh, well, dot B vector, which is just B squared. Um, the second one, well, here you have A cross B. And um, uh, we can, oh, this is the, the divergence of something, so we can apply the divergence theorem. So let's take this one. And let's apply the divergence theorem, minus 1 over 2 mu naught. Um, so we get some surface integral of just A cross B dot the area there. Okay. And then at this point, he's going to use the trick. So this is a closed surface, the flux. At this point, he, he says, well, we can take our volume to be arbitrarily large. And since we're going to assume that the current goes to zero as we tend to zero, then the surface integral is going to be arbitrarily large where the A and B vectors are zero. So we're going to say that's zero. Okay. So then we end up with this formula that work is equal to um, over all space of b squared d tau. So the work it takes to build up a magnetic field in space is just b squared times the volume. Um, so that is how much energy is stored inside of a magnetic field. It comes directly from this. It really does. So um, Now there's an interesting parallel because you remember the work it takes to build up an electric field is just you know epsilon naught over 2 times the integral of e squared d tau, okay? And we had this form, where is the form that, oh, this is the one I wanted to keep as well. This one's interesting. This is the vector potential dotted with the current. Well, in electrostatics, you had the potential times the charge density. And uh, so, anyway, very, very interesting parallel. So, example 13 is up. Thanks for your time, bye.